We have Denny McQuain here, our good friend, former Detroit Tiger pitcher and a Detroit Tiger legend and a darn good guy and somebody whom I've loved having here. Denny, how are you? How's things? How's Detroit? I'm fine, Tony. Uh, I think Detroit's okay. I've been, uh, I don't know where the hell I am today. I don't mean, know where are we right now. Uh, I, I I see, and you know, I, uh, I'm watching this Tiger team in 2015, and uh, I think they need you. I mean, the, the loss of these two pitchers, I'm getting a little bit concerned here. What do you think? Well, they haven't had the best winter of their uh, careers uh, up in the front office. I don't know what they're going to do. They've got a lot of holes. They, first of all, they still need a catcher, which I think is their primary responsibility to go out and get, because uh, we just don't have one. And then, um, you know, you get like, two big holes between Sister and, and Scherzer, who, you know, you can sit here and criticize all you want. He had pretty good stuff. He's a sixth inning pitcher. He doesn't want to pitch when he's got a lead in the seventh inning, wants somebody else to carry the ball for him. And by the way, if he was just, if he just stayed in three or four more games last year, if he had just won three or four more games and he lost, he lost the decision to win in five of them last year. If he'd have just stayed in long enough to win three of them, he went to Cy Young again. I mean, he'd have won it twice in a row. But he's not made up that way. We want to give the ball to somebody else. You know, there's a lot of terms for it. And then what he did in Boston a couple of years ago was was a pathetic when he, after striking out the 12, 13, 14 guys, four in a row in the seventh inning, he asked to come out of the game. He said he was tired. The biggest game of his career, biggest game of the year for the Tigers and the Tiger fans. And he was tired. Can you imagine being tired in a game like that? That was that was an iconic moment for a, for a guy in Detroit. And he uh, he blew it. And, and I, I, he's a lot happier today than he was with us. I mean, uh, our uh, our fans had kind of uh, got real negative on him uh, just because uh, he makes the big statement that uh, I don't play this game for money. Well, if you don't play this game for money, why the hell wants to stay in Detroit? <laughs> you know, it makes yeah. no sense. I mean, it makes no sense at all. So. Uh, but he's gone, and uh, we'll find somebody to replace him. We'll, win his, we'll probably win as many games as last year. I don't know how right off the end, but because uh, some guys got to step up and do a better job than they did last year. But we're, you know, keep in mind we're in one of the worst divisions. Contrary to what happened last year with Kansas City, we are still in one of the worst divisions in baseball. Uh, we can take a look at Minnesota, Cleveland, uh, and I don't. They, they can talk all they want about Kansas City, but uh, I think that was an aberration last year. And, uh, you know, when, when you walk through the forest once in a while, trees don't fall on you. No tree hit them until the World Series. Yeah, for sure. Now, the Tigers are an older club, you know, and uh, more maturity perhaps than others. You think that helps or you think that hurts as the year goes on? No, I don't. I don't think it hurts. Uh, but if you do not have an incoming crew of younger players that can step in and start to play a little bit, then it hurts. Uh, I don't know where they're going to get the young talent from. They signed a lot of guys uh, this past winter. They're trying to catch lightning in a bottle. This is the way Dombrowski's always been a general manager. Uh, in the past, he said Jimmy Leland. And Leland knew what the hell he was doing, knew what the hell he was talking about. Leland had a uniqueness about it that he could tell when a guy was a player. I, in other words, he was a, He's a good baseball athlete. Man. A good athlete. You start with a real good athlete. You start with one up on most people. And uh, that's how good Jimmy was when it came to doing things like that. And, of course, they, uh, whatever they say, whatever story they want to take, they force them out. And, uh, you know, now they're, now they're stuck with what they have. And, and this kid, is the guy managing right now, is a good guy. Uh, but uh, he's known Jimmy Leland, and I suspect that uh, uh, if he doesn't get off to a real good start, then everybody will start screaming for his head. But uh, we'll see. I mean, it's 162 games, but, you know, still games still gets down to one thing, pitching and injuries. Mm -hmm. you can stay, if you have good pitching and you stay away from injuries, you got a chance. You ever think, and, and this is probably a redundant question, but I'd like to memorialize it, do you ever think we'll see a time when pitchers aren't going to come out in six innings in our lifetimes? I, I don't, not anymore. I mean, the money is, the money is too dramatic. Um, I mean, these guys, uh, I, I, first of all, I think I think Scherzer is an exception. I don't think guys want to come out. I mean, I know when I played, uh, in all the years that I played, I only, I only knew one, one or two guys that, that just were petrified when they got a lead in the sixth or seventh inning, they wanted out. And uh, Scherzer's, the, you know, obviously I'm not as close to the game as I once was, but Scherzer just, that's just the way he's made up. He doesn't, but the, the uniqueness of 
Scherzer's one other one other bullet here. And the bullet is this. When he's behind one to nothing or two to one, he wants to stay in that game. I mean, the heel fight shouldn't stay in the ball game. But uh, when he's ahead, you know, Josh, he just uh, he can't get to the manager quick enough. Yeah, it, it's almost reminiscent of what they used to say about Mill Pappas. Oh, you know what? I forgot about Mill. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Because yeah. when he got into the sixth or seventh inning with a lead, yeah, Uncle Mill uh, wanted out of there too. Yeah, you're absolutely right. <laughs> absolutely, I forget about Mill. Yeah, and of course you got to be of a certain vintage to remember Milt Pappas. I wanted to get your thoughts, just a, a gear shift for a moment. What what are your impressions of this Hall of Fame Veterans Committee? You know, I know you follow things along on Facebook, and there's a very active group um, campaigning for Dick Allen, Tony Oliva, Gil Hodges, the great players, you know, of, of, of your era. Uh, and it seems to be sort of a shrinking and almost forgotten Jim Cott. Um, it, do you think they're going about things the right way, or, uh, uh, or are they missing? You know, they, they screamed the loudest last year when uh, the writers didn't put anybody in. I mean, they screamed, our, our committee screamed the you know, called people names, and uh, begrudged everybody that sent a vote in last year, and some guys didn't vote. They crushed that guy. Uh, two or three guys didn't vote. Some guy put, uh, you know, cartoon names on one. Uh, you know, and they were screaming and holler. But what they did this year is even worse. And the reason why it's worse, because they had, you know, arguably so, they had five or six Hall of Famers that could have gone in. Let's just start with Tony Oliva. Just start with Tony Oliva. And I, don't, and I played for Ted Williams. I didn't play against them, unfortunately. But I can tell you this. The greatest hitter I ever saw during my era was Tony Oliva, period. Mm -hmm. Nobody even close to Tony Oliva. And then you got Jim Cott. Those two guys have to be in the Hall of Fame. There is no question. Jim Cott won the Gold Glove 16 or 17 times. Yes. And uh, did you mean to tell me you can't get enough votes to get in the Hall of Fame? See, this is what happens when it turns political. And there's more politics going on than there are votes and the, and the people who deserve to be there. Jim Cott, I believe, should have been in there years ago. Some of the other guys probably needed to be in there years ago. And then, you know, we can argue about, uh, we can probably argue about Hodges, we can probably argue about... Uh, the Gallon, although I think the Gallon, my personal uh, situation is I think he belongs there. Uh, but you know what? It's, uh, it, it was very disappointing that they didn't put a couple of guys in. Really disappointing. And, and we're, I'll guarantee you next year, they'll probably, somehow or other, they'll figure out how to put six in. <laughs> I, I sure hope so, because it's just yeah, too long in coming. Too, because it makes that week in Cooperstown so much nicer, so much more pleasant. Uh, it's such a great feeling to be there when you've got a whole bunch of good guys going in. And uh, although we got some good ones, uh, you know, the guys have just retired recently going in, but uh, the guys that really should be in there aren't in there right now, and it's unfortunate. I, I, I would agree totally. Uh, in our closing moments, to shift gears again, uh, what is your impression of this whole deflate gate and uh, the Super Bowl and tampering with the balls? And uh, I'm sure you've given this some thought. You know, I, 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 the bottom line is, it is what it is. Uh, it, the commissioner apparently is in no hurry to resolve it. I'm sure that as soon as the game is over, we'll probably hear within three or four hours, well, there's a rumor that uh, the, the Patriots are going to be fined $9 million or something <laughs> like that. They're going to lose 14 draft choices over the next 22 years. And that's what's going to happen. Yeah. I mean, everybody knows it. Um, and whoever did it, they did it. And I'll guarantee you one thing, they didn't do it on their own. I mean, uh, what ball boy would think about deflating the ball? And, and they say now they got video of the kid taking one ball or two balls at a time and bringing them back and doing a couple more. So, you know what? Uh, everybody looks for an edge. I know when I pitch, uh, I hate it like hell. If I had a ball that really felt good, I would do everything in the world to keep that ball in the game. Every once in a while, you'd have a little thinking one, and that ball will do things uh, if you can throw the ball hard enough that people would not believe. And so you fight for it. I mean, you and, you, and there's ways you can think the ball from time to time. Uh, but, uh, you know, it's all in the personal choice of the guy. And, and uh, but one thing about Brady, what the hell does he need a softball for? I mean, why does he need, he doesn't need anything but a football. Mm -hmm. The guy is probably, uh, and I'm not, and I'm, I'm picking Seattle just because of that uh, quarterback who you cannot defend. I mean, all, all he wants to do is run like hell. Uh, and, and that's the only reason, but I think Brady, the book without history, is maybe the greatest quarterback of all time. 
it's it's really quite a legacy and uh, yeah. Denny I, I can't believe it we're out of time and uh, we're following you as you go on Facebook and uh, continued good health success and uh, you know uh, keep keep being Denny best to Sharon and uh, thank you as always humbly for uh, spending some time in our uh, our humble little show and uh, best always to you. Well if anybody's in Sebastian Florida tomorrow that's uh, just uh, east of uh, Orlando we're doing a big show over there at Sebastian Sebastian Sports at the uh, American Legion Post 189 so if you get over there we're going to be there between 10 and 3 tomorrow and uh, just come on over and say hello other than that everybody have a great day great weekend and we'll see you soon thanks so much Denny take care bye now and that's our friend Denny McLean and uh, I love Denny he just kind of tells you exactly where it's at and I can only think about what they were doing to baseballs in those days but uh, we'll be back to you on February 3rd with our good friend Judy Heft and uh, Keith O'Brien and uh, we're going to be rocking here in Connecticut morning and uh, thanks so much only because of you we're here and uh, we love hearing from you so take care have a wonderful day and uh, a wonderful weekend and I'll see you next week.